Hello everyone, Silvermoon here. Welcome to another episode of Let's Play the Pokemon Trading Guard game. Even though 8-bit summer has been long over, I'm still gonna finish this game off. I, I wonder, you're probably wondering why I started off here, because I forgot to put the automatic mail to the auto machine. Yes, let's insert fighting metal. Let's look at this. But first strike deck, and this one actually has heated battle deck from one of the covers. Yeah, you're gonna have the lightning metal. You do have the power. Have the psychic metal. And I believe strange power deck is. Relax. No, it is not. Yeah, this is Murray's deck, and it has a lot of Pokemon. It's mainly trainer cards used to make sure that you take adv full advantage of the walling abilities that Damage Swap has with other cards that heal. I believe we have one more mill. No, we don't. We only have two mills left. Go so, instead of going for lightning metal this time, I'm actually going to go for the science metal. This time, because... I still lightning modified my... Wow, I'm not going to battle you, Makuni, but... Let's go into the science club. And look at that. They have Game Boy Colors as laboratory equipment screens. With television... No signal screens. Yeah. Yeah, let's come after back there. We have to duel everyone here. Hey, you, Rick, the Clubmaster, who's in the middle of an important experiment. There's no time to see someone like you. If you really want to see him, you must defeat me first. Actually, let me make sure I have the proper deck equipped. Yes, I do. Well, we're going to duel the other Clubmaster first. You guys here. Pokemon cards here as a science card. Especially science Pokemon cards. Science Pokemon are exceedingly strong. Would you like to duel against my science Pokemon deck? Sure. Okay, now they're just reusing faces. Eric's deck focuses on his research as a chemistry major into the wondrous and obnoxious world of poison. It can get really annoying because his venom knows no bounds and nearly every Pokemon in his deck focuses on eventually being able to poison you, which will gradually whittle you down. So beat him quickly and avoid getting poisoned and you should be fine against this astute student. Can't leave my science stick. Hold on, you could lose. Evolution booster pack. Filled with Pokemon we don't really need. Another evolution booster pack. With a Venusaur that I will never use. Let's be seeing this further. Alright, let's deal with this guy now. Hmm, the machine. It's not working quite right. Huh? Oh, this. This is the machine that makes deck. Much better than Dr. Mason's. Hmm, let's see here. You wanna know against me? You bet. Should we get the match? It'll be a single match for four prizes. Lovely Neater on deck. Obvious from his deck, David is obviously studying biology. Look at him, he's studying why Coffee and Grimer are technically alive, even though they're just sludge and poison made living. But he also focuses on regular Pokemon, such as Doduo, who is a mutated second head, and Meowth, who is mutated to somehow produce money, despite how that works. However, his main focus is all the different Nidorons, how they're not a si how they're different species despite the fact that they are different genders. And you don't any of those discard, you do not need to fear a uh, Nido Queen. You need to fear her fanboys. They're almost as bad as cosplayers. My theory is the machine's malfunctioning caused it. Yeah, right. It's all about skill, dude. Nido Queen. I don't need another Mew. Oh wow, I might actually put that in my deck right now. Because Mew is insanely good, gonna be insanely good because. Well, the question is what to replace it with. Yeah, I'll replace one of my ghastly with it. Because this, that Mew card is really good 
Now let's steal you. Hey, you. Yeah, I'll duel you. Not too smart, but you've got a nerves. We'll play four prizes. Yeah, I'm, I have a theory that there's a limited number of faces and they just have different effects applied to them like hats. That's just me, though. Maybe they were separately created. What compels Pikachu to tie balloons to their waist to fly? Where do they get so many balloons? How do they even control themselves in the air? These questions and more are what Joseph studies and uses in his deck. He w ponders these questions every day, in addition to wondering how bird Pokemon like Pidgey can even summon whirlwinds that can carry other Pokemon away without destroying a town in the process. Interesting questions indeed. And I win. Awesome. They give us a laboratory booster pack. Lefable, okay. Alright, before I bother you, I'm gonna just go check my email. And Imakuni's still here. Yep, we do have a new email. It's me, Dr. Mason. How are you doing, Jacob? I have some information for you about Rick's death. Birds! For you about Rick's deck. He's an actor of the science club. This deck, use, deck uses mox toxic gas to prevent your Pokemon from using Pokemon power. Avoid using a deck that relies on Pokemon power to attack. This deck's weakness is psychic Pokemon, like psychic Pokemon duel deck. I suggest you study the deck for the psychic metal deck machine. Hopefully it will be of some assistance. Good laboratory boots back another Mewtwo. Ooh. I want to add that to my deck real quick. Because Having a deck that relies too much on Pokemon powers in this game is not a good thing. Oh, but I have six of this Mewtwo! Jeez! I actually think I will sacrifice one Jinx in order to bring my count Mewtwo up to an even four. Yeah, let's get, go duel Rick. I'm Rick, master of the science school. Science rules nature, that is why you're so strong. You should test the strengths of science by playing against me? Yes. Alright, six prizes. Let's begin. Well, there's a science deck. And look at that background. Rick, the science club master, focuses his research and his deck on Pokemon that are created through the wonders of, as he calls it, SCIENCE! His Main research focuses extensively on the adaptivity of the virtual Pokemon, Porygon, which can adapt to any po Pokemon type and immediately make itself invulnerable to whatever attacks are being thrown at it. While this is useful and he tends to boast about it a lot, this boasting gets him in a lot of trouble because he tends to forget about more important things such as how much longer he has to speak or in this case, how many cards are remaining on his, in his deck. And he sometimes gets so focused in his discussion, he doesn't realize what he draws, and doesn't use it properly, or doesn't even try to go out fighting, so... I... So he is very easy to mess with, and... He tends to forget that sometimes science isn't the answer. Sometimes you just have to go in swinging and act rather than think. This might have been a good thing for him to realize because he did not seem to realize he needed to make a move and try and actually win instead of just letting, trying to block me with his theories and his proven theories on Porygon being adaptive and invulnerable to attacks that are thrown at it. And I am running on and on myself with this long speech that is finally coming to an end because this is the end of my footage. <laughs> See that? See that cover of cards in deck? I decked him out! <laughs> there are a time from which even science cannot answer. Yeah, like running out of cards to your deck and losing because of that, because you just 
Insist on walling with a Porygon. Here, take this bill. Is a result of our research. No. It says it's a result. It's a gift from the Grand Masters. And we got the science bill. One left to go. Laboratory booster pack. Of course, the chasm muck in it. The card he uses. Nine Game Boy Nine Tails. Of course. And Emakuni's still here. Any new email? Yes, there is. Try to be able to This time I have to type the number of cards to be shown your deck. If you have three basic Pokemon cards, you'll want two of it stage one and one of it stage two. If you follow the rule, your deck will be balanced. You should have about 14 basic Pokemon and anywhere between 20 and 26 energy cards in your deck. The type of energy cards will depend on the type of Pokemon you have in your deck. I'm not going to look at the decks in the deck machine prints. Mason Lever, Charm Mason, Winky Face. Yes. This time we're sending two booster packs again. Mystery booster pack. The Fairy. And Magneton. Only the rare cards really matter now. You know what? Let's. Let, let's go give. See that guy at the. I believe he's at the. Rock Club? So let's see if we go one to another card. No, that's the guy from the Rock Club. No news, alright. So maybe he's at the Fighting Club. Yeah, he is. Parasect? Yeah, let's give him to him. See, I see he's still kind of giving me so many cards. Please accept this card as a gift from me to you. It's level 16 Pikachu. Please take good care of it. Yes, it's the Pokemon the first movie promotional Pikachu. Ground Thunder Shock. I'm not going to really use it, mind you, but still, it's a promotional card that you can only get. Well, I shouldn't say that because. Remember that card I lost? I lost missed down on because I didn't go to the challenge hall after my fifth medal. Well, there are other challenge halls once you beat the Grand Masters, and which you can activate pretty much by soft resetting. And if you win those, you get a random promotional card, other, any promotional card other than the legendary Pokemon cards and the card pop promos. So that's good to know. Well, I say we just put the science medal in the deck machine, see what decks it unlocks, and call it an episode. Yeah, that's lightning metal. Darn it. Yeah, he has the Wonders of Science deck, which I can't build. Poison deck, Lion Pokemon deck, Science Core deck, and Lovely Year edit. So it actually has some of the Pokemon that are in the decks in the club, but I'm gonna call it an episode right here. So, thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so very much for watching.